Hi there, and welcome to part one of the Thekus Classroom iSCSI connectivity tutorial. In the next two sections, we will show you how iSCSI is activated on a Thekus NAS and how to access the NAS over iSCSI from Windows 7. In this section, we will discuss what iSCSI is and how it can benefit you. When you're storing data in your computer, your computer uses something called SCSI, or Small Computer System Interface, to move files around. The user sends what we call a SCSI request through a SCSI interface, and the disk answers with the requested data. SCSI disks are local disks and appear as such. Even though it's very fast, SCSI only works within your computer. But what do you do when you want the convenience of an internal disk over a local network or the internet? Enter iSCSI. SCSI for internet. Your computer, or iSCSI initiator, sends out an iSCSI request over an IP network to an external device, like a network storage device or a NAS, which becomes the iSCSI target. The target then responds with the requested data over the network. As far as you and your computer are concerned, the iSCSI disk is internal, even if it is across the room or across the globe. You can reformat it like a local disk, it's easier to manage running applications, and offers the same or better performance and security as other protocols iSCSI has several very interesting applications. Let's take a look. This is a very simplified network map of a typical iSCSI installation. But what if we make some changes? Many devices can become iSCSI initiators. Thekus NAS can be stacked together with iSCSI locally or remotely. Your NAS then becomes its own initiator, making it able to link up with one, two, or even five other NAS to create one massive storage space. With this kind of setup, you can manage all of your NAS through one contact point, get faster iSCSI transfers, be able to scale your storage space according to your needs, and maintain a secure environment. iSCSI is an internet protocol. That means you can use any kind of IP-based network such as your local network at home, broadband internet, or even 3G networks to carry information. This can be done from literally anywhere that has an internet connection. This feature has several advantages. If your computer crashes, all of your data will be safely stored within the NAS and can be retrieved easily. Also, if your iSCSI initiator gets disconnected for any reason, any other computer can be used to access the same data with proper authorization. This is a typical iSCSI network architecture. Several stack NAS are providing storage from a central location. Data is passed through switches, routers, or gateways on the way to its destination in the local network. All connected devices can benefit from iSCSI. If your company needs remote access, say for a sales team on a business trip, they can still access their NAS through the internet. NAS can also be stacked over long distances with iSCSI. This is easily set up with VPN or port forwarding, letting NAS that are very far away from each other be accessed through a single IP address. In other words, at a single point. So let's go over some of the main points we've covered. iSCSI is an easy and fast way to transfer data across networks. Your data will be safely stored away and available in case you run into any problems with your computers. iSCSI lets disks on local or remote networks worldwide appear as if they were internal disks in your computer. And you can easily manage who has access to your data. There are also some more advanced functions like iSCSI thin provisioning and the Thekus exclusive NAS stacking for added scalability. Now you might be asking yourself, how do I access these functions? 
In this tutorial, we'll walk you through a step-by-step -step to create an iSCSI target. The two things you will need are an iSCSI capable Thekis NAS and a computer with a web browser. Today we'll be walking through a step-by-step -step process on how to create an iSCSI target on the Thekis NAS. First you'll need to log in to your NAS. Then in the search bar you'll type in iSCSI and click enter and it'll open a new window called Space Allocation. You then want to add a new iSCSI target. The next step you want to do is set the allocation size to your customized setting. You want to also enable the iSCSI target volume. Type in a new target name of your choice and confirm that the year and month are accurate. If you're a more advanced user, you can customize the LUN ID and authentication authentication to your personal settings. Next you want to click OK and it will create the target, iSCSI target volume. After you have successfully created the iSCSI target it will return you to the space allocation page where you have finished. In this tutorial we'll walk you through a step-by-step -step process for iSCSI Initiator on Windows 7. The two things you'll need are an iSCSI target, such as a Thekis NAS, and a computer with Windows 7. We'll be walking you through a step-by-step -step process to connect the iSCSI target with the Windows iSCSI Initiator. First, you want to click on the Windows Start button. In the search bar, type iSCSI and click on iSCSI Initiator. It will then open the iSCSI Initiator Properties window. Click on Discovery tab, then click on Discover Portal. You then want to enter the IP of your NAS and click OK. It will return you to the iSCSI Initiator Properties window, which then you will need to click on the Targets tab. Highlight the newly discovered IP and click Connect. Then you want to click OK in the newly window. From your computer's point of view, you had just plugged you theoretically just plugged in a new hard drive, so you need to format it. The next step will be to click on the Windows Start button. In the search bar, type in disk management. Click Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. This will then recognize the new hard drive. Next you want to right click on the new disk, click New Simple Volume, and it will pop up the new Volume Wizard Setup window. After you see the new simple volume wizard window pop up, you want to click on next. This new window will allow you to define the size. We recommend that you keep it at the default settings. You can move on to the next window by clicking next. Here you can assign a drive letter, but once again we re recommend you click on next. In this third window, you can define a new volume. After you have to find a new volume label, you can click on the Next button. And finally, the Finish button. 